Dr. Newman, there was a key moment in your interview in the company of the Washington Post reporter Jefferson Morley, November 3rd, 1994. You were sitting in the home of Jane Roman, who 31 years earlier had signed off on information which she knew was false and misleading in response to a routine inquiry from the Mexico City Station about what do we have on this guy Oswald. It was the first week of October 1963. It was six weeks prior to the assassination. Jane Roman is a liaison desk officer who doesn't make protocol and is not deciding to do something on her own. But she's a reliable professional in a very, very important position. 31 years later, you took her chronologically from the middle of 1962 until literally a few days prior to that request from the Mexico City Station. And you showed her all of the documentation with her signature on it, indicating that she was apprised. She was aware of things that certain other people inside the CIA were not aware of. Would you mind telling us what she said first when you asked her, what's your take on this? And second, after you asked her, does this indicate to you an operational interest in Oswald six weeks prior to the assassination? Well, like you said, I showed her the documents first. And then I showed her the routing slips with her initials on them. And then I asked her uh, about what that meant. And after she saw the last document, the signs of her mouth curled up towards her ears. <laughs> and she got it. Because I already had her on record. We had two tape recorders going that they might have just. And so she said to me, I'm signing off on something that's not true. And that was a real breakthrough right there. And then I said, I don't know, why? We're just signing off on something that's not true. And she said, look, I wasn't involved, really. I wasn't involved in the hanky-banky. It, it, it's indicative of a keen operational interest in Lee Harvey Oswald. And that's not supposed to happen either, right? They're not supposed to be interested at all in the essay as the Cuban Affairs staff. So that was a, one of those breakthrough moments. Uh, it was not that long after the JFK Records Act. And there was a, again, there was this feeling like, OK, it's OK to talk now. right? And so there was no reason why not to just engage. It. And, and, and she did. And I put her in a position by asking her in the right sequence where she just blurted it out. So, so, if I may, what she said in response to your direct question, which was recorded and transcribed by the Washington Post Transcription Service, you said, if I recall correctly, and it's possible I don't, but I believe you said, I guess what I'm asking you to address head on here is, does this indicate to you an operational interest in Oswald six weeks prior to the assassination? And her response, without missing a beat, was, yes, to me it indicates a keen interest held very closely on a need-to-know basis. <laughs> tell me, tell us what happened when you and Jeff walked out of the house. Well, we just wondered what had taken place with him. <laughs> <laughs> James moved down the, the football field a little bit that day. Just yeah. with Malcolm Blunt and, and yeah. Pete Bagley. 